All right, so now we're talking about lighting effects. And we're not talking about lighting effects in the sense of photography where we're going to add a, a light filter or mess with the exposure or anything like that. No, we're going to create lighting effects that will enhance your designs, making your images a little bit more interesting by adding some certain special effects that have to do with cool lighting. So we're going to start with something that I know you've probably seen before. I've certainly seen it um, online and, and numerous magazines is the effect of a light trail kind of spiraling around this dancer here. So it's certainly something we've all seen. It always looks cool because it's just a really cool lighting effect. And it's really, really quite simple to achieve, just simply using a layer style and a custom brush. So let's start by actually getting a preset brush that's already defined in Photoshop, and we're just going to modify it a little bit to, to what we need. So before we do anything, of course, I'm going to go over here and create a new blank layer. And let's go over here into the toolbar and select our tool brush. And inside the preset menu here, you'll see a list of brushes. If you don't, simply go into the flyout menu here and choose brushes to load that menu. And we're going to look for this brush right here. It's called Fuzzy Cluster Loose. And if we go inside the document, I'm going to go ahead and flip around my foreground and background color so we'll, white will be in the foreground. And if I just do a stroke here, you'll see it's got kind of an interesting effect to it. It's got a, it's got a streak and it's got all these little flares on it. Well, let me undo that, and let's go into the options and see what we're looking at here. So I can see that the flow is set to 70. I'm going to go ahead and drag that and take that just to 100%, and let's open up the brush options. Notice we've got a brush selected. It's also got a dual brush applied to it, so we've got two different brushes going on here, the long streaky one and then those little spotted ones. And we've got some other dynamics going on here. And... I'm going to go ahead and activate and modify a few things on my own here. So let's take the brush tip shape and actually increase it. I'm going to take it to about 25, and that will be good for the size. I'm going to go and activate shape dynamics because I want the pen pressure to modify the size. As you can see, it's going to taper off. So depending on how hard or how soft I press down on my tablet, it will vary the weight of the light trail there. So... That set, let's go into the dual brush, and I'm going to change this from this little spiky one to one I've got right up here, and you have this in your presets as well. It's this little one uh, called the 192 right here. And I'm going to modify a few things about this. Let's take this and space it out a little bit more, and we'll take that size down. You'll notice what it's get, looks more like a burst, almost as if you would see a light trail. You'd see bursts of light here and there. Let's just kind of brush it and see what happens. You notice what's going on there. Gives it a little bit more interest there. And you can certainly modify the effects here. You can modify that scattering just to kind of make it a little bit more spread apart there. Modify the size if you like, depending on what you want to do. And I think that's going to work for what we're looking at here. So my brush is set up. And uh, be aware, I can always go back in here and change it if I want to. But I'm going to close this for now. And again, we're on this blank layer. So I'm just going to take this brush and just do a little little stroke there and basically this is just going to be a dummy object for the layer style that we need to create so I need to see how it's going to look so there that object is on its own layer let's go over here into the layers panel and we're gonna go in here to the layer styles menu and choose outer glow and let's go in here and modify a few things about this well I'm gonna change the color first and foremost let's go in here and give it kind of a purplish pinkish color there I think that looks pretty good I'm gonna click OK I'm gonna take that opacity all the way up to a hundred and we'll change the blend mode to hard light. You'll notice it really stands out now. I'm going to increase that size a little bit just to give it a little bit, of, a little bit more of a glow. And I think that will look pretty good. Now, to enhance this a little bit more and give it some sparks to it, I'm going to add a drop shadow. But not in the way you think. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here and change the color of this to a perhaps lighter version, almost a white uh, of that same pink color. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to take that blend mode and change it to dissolve. And look what happens to that trail. It's got kind of a cool little sparkly speckled effect to it. And I'm going to decrease that by dropping my opacity to about 25. So that's giving me a really cool effect there. So all the layer styles done and set up. Let's go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and press Command or Control A to go ahead and select everything on that layer and delete. Because we only needed that object there to create the layer style. So now that layer is empty. It's got the layer style applied. No matter what I do from now on, on this layer, it's going to pick up that layer style. So let's grab that same brush. And using the white as the foreground, of course, you can do this one of two ways. If you have a very precise way of applying 
the stroke that you want to do. You can certainly use a path, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But in this case, all I'm going to do is just hand freehand around the area that I want to apply this to. So I'm going to start right on the side of the foot here. I'm just going to drag around here, and we'll just drag and do like that. In fact, I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to take it up to about 30. And we'll just kind of go around here and just do like that. So, white trail is kind of going around. It doesn't look like much because it's just sitting on top. But here's what we're going to do. I'm going to apply a layer mask to that. And let's grab our brush tool. Now, before we select a new brush, it's a good idea at this point to save this brush if you like what you've created. So let's go into the tool presets. Go into new tool preset and I'll call this light brush. And we don't necessarily need to include the color, and we'll click OK. So we've saved that brush. Now that we're on that layer mask, let's go and grab a very soft standard edge brush here. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And of course, painting with black so we can hide areas. I want to hide certain areas that are going behind this girl. So I want this uh, part to stay in front, so we'll just kind of brush out this area here. And we'll let that go around the front. And maybe let this one trail off behind her, behind the leg there. Just like that. We'll let that continue around front. And maybe like this one go behind her as well. And now it looks like that trail is just kind of wrapping around doing its own thing. And we can certainly add other layers to this. Well, that was just drawn at freehand, you know, and it looks a little jagged there. But now, th of course, there's another way of doing it, and that is through using a path. So let's turn off this uh, layer here. And I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key, and you'll notice, I don't, just to save yourself from having to go through creating that layer style all over again on a new layer, just do this. Hold down the Option or Alt key, and then click that little FX icon and drag it to your target layer, and it will copy and paste the layer style all in one step. Pretty cool stuff. So again, let's go into here and apply this again. I'm going to use the Freeform Pen tool, and let's just draw a similar trail to what we just did a moment ago. And we'll just kind of go through here, and kind of whip it up there. Now the cool thing about it being on a path is that you can modify it. I can grab it and move it, make adjustments to it if I want. Let's say I wanted to go in here and maybe round off a few of these corners a little bit more. Perhaps even delete certain parts of it. If you really wanted to fine tune the bend of the, uh, of the, of the line and do all that kind of stuff, that's going to give you the freedom on a path. And once you're done and the path is created, make sure that you're on the layer that you're targeting, go into the Paths panel, and there you've got the path. Just simply go into the Flyout menu and choose Stroke Path, and you want to use the brush because that's what we were reusing. Simulate Pressure, you can go ahead and leave that on, click OK, and notice what happens. It applies that brush right on there. Now, obviously it looks a little big, so let's actually go in here and take the brush down a size. And you know what? It's using that brush we used on the layer mask, remember? So we need to go back and select our light brush, which is right there. Is that it? Yes, it is. And let's go back in there and then apply that stroke path brush, and there it looks more, that's more like it. And you can intensify that effect even more. You can uh, apply it twice. The second icon here at the bottom does the very same thing. It applies it, hit it again, it applies it, and makes it a little bit more intense. So you can see that line is a little bit more definite and smoother than the last line that we hand drew. So just to give you a couple ways of doing it, let's go ahead and put that layer mask on this layer. And again, grabbing a brush, a very soft edge brush here. And let's have this trail stay in front of her. And let's go ahead and paint this one away. It goes behind her face there. Oh, erased a little more than I wanted to right there. Let's bring that back in. And I think that looks pretty cool. And you can, of course, do other ones. Let me do one more thing here. I'm going to go and create a new blank layer. And again, as I did a moment ago, I'm going to option, hold down the Option or Alt key and click and drag that layer style to that layer. But now I'm going to change the color. Let's go in here and modify this. I'm going to double click on that word Effects. And let's go into the Outer Glow and let's change this to a kind of a high blue color. And the same with the Drop Shadow. We'll give it a lighter blue color. Click OK. And again, let's go and grab that light brush. Yeah, I can't tell you how enough. If you're going to experiment with these brushes and the brush engine and you create a really cool brush that's got a lot of complex uh, settings, 
Save it as a preset. You will thank me in the end. So we got the same brush, different layer style. Let's see what we get. So we're giving a, kind of an interesting thing there. So let's grab this and actually draw out a path. So we'll start up here. And this time we'll actually just kind of use the Bezier curves. Give it a more definite shape. And we'll just come right down here just like that. So we got a very definite path on this blank layer. Again, into the layer, uh, paths panel, stroke path, brush, simulate pressure. Boom, there it is looking really cool. And we can, of course, take it and put it behind her if we want. Let's go ahead and put a layer mask on that. And getting a soft edge brush, let's just paint this area here so it appears to be behind her. And how cool is that? Very cool way of using very simple brushes and applying a layer style to generate the light effect and then having it enhance your images. Now, that's one way of using these lighting effects. In the next video, we're going to talk about another way of using various shapes and other brushes to create another kind of lighting effect.